services are given by x dot uh, no, a double zero. This is standard. With what are the things that are mentioned here is fast authentication. So I have uh, spoken a lot about authentication, but it is assurance that the communication entity is the one it claimed to be. That means, uh, you know, uh, somebody is logging in into the system uh, claiming that he is manager. So it should be authentic, you know, the mechanism should uh, able to authenticate that person. Yeah, he is the real manager. It, he is not somebody else and pretending to be manager, right? Then peer entity and authentication, that is mutual confidence in the identities of parties involved in the communication. That means, in, say two systems are communicating, right? Say one mobile device and another is, uh, you know, access point, okay? So this access point and the mobile device should be able to authenticate each other, okay? Like you do, you know, when you uh, connect to some wireless access point, you need to select the access point name or access ID and uh, you need to give the corresponding password, okay? So this uh, password and access ID helps the access point to identify your device. And on the other hand, uh, from the other side, your device also you know, send message to the to only to the hotspot to which it is connected, right? Uh, so this is what. Then uh, data or origin authentication. That means from which source the data is coming. That origin should be you know, authenticable. It should be you know authenticated by the system. So this is uh, the first service authentication. Next is access control. So. Uh, Access control we already discussed in our previous uh, discussion also. Now it is mainly who can access what uh, power of the resources and assets or data, right? So the prevention of uh, unauthorized use of resource. That means, you know, say, say somebody is a simple uh, user. He is uh, just uh, there to serve the customers at one customer at a time. So. He does not need to access the you know whole database at a time, or he does not need to enter into the server room, right? So this even he is a user of the system, but using access control, you can just uh, limit their you know uh, access to different resources. Now, who can have access to a resource? Uh, that is also you know that in the other word uh, can be defined by access control then under what condition access can occur? That means, say there is a server, you know, the server room, so now physically somebody need to access that room. Now in what condition? Is there some legitimate reason to enter into that room physically? Okay, or say somebody need to reinstall the database or, you know, take the backup. So in what situation that people are doing it and who is doing it, all these can be defined by the access control. Then what those accessing the resources are allowed to do that means who are accessing the resources physically somebody is allowed to enter into the server room now question is that uh, after you know get getting the permission to enter what that person is doing so somebody uh, is allowed to taking the ba uh, backup of the database so what that person is doing with the data database backup okay he should not do anything unlawful so that is the thing, you uh, know, comes under access control. Then data confidentiality, protection of data from unauthorized disclosure against eavesdropping. And uh, nowadays, you know, another thing is also coming. I think uh, you all guys are uh, using social media, so you know uh, the fight of uh, what's up going on right now. Uh, so Facebook is using the WhatsApp data for, you know, putting more personalized advertisement, and Facebook is also Forcing, uh, no, no, it is like to be. There is a news I was seeing somewhere that uh, probably Facebook is going to force the WhatsApp users to connect their you know accounts, like you know you do on Google. If uh, you have one account of Google uh, Gmail and you can use uh, all the uh, services of Google. So why Google do, does it? So if, if they can analyze your activity on different platform. Okay. So the same thing um, the Facebook is trying to do, but people are you know, protest, protesting against against it and for Facebook and on social media as you can notice right now. 
So that uh, comes under this. And then traffic flow flow confidentiality is one step ahead. That means you know when your traffic is flowing on the network at that time, you know, data is trans you are transmitting the data from one system to another system from you know say time to server. So when it is on the transmission, so whether your data is going to be anonymous, that means if somebody even captures a packet of data, so can he identify whose data it is or the data should be anonymous on the channel, right? So that is another kind of confidentiality. Then comes data integrity. We all understand what integrity means, right? Integrity means what? It should be, you know, when uh, on the transmission or when on the you know storage, nobody is going to change your data illegally, right? Or in any way, okay, without your permission. So assurance that the data receives are exactly as sent by the authorized user. That means uh, you know, on the transmission, nobody has changed their data. Okay, no modification, no insertion, deletion, or reply. So nothing should be uh, taken place. Then non reputation so what is this uh, protection against uh, denial by one of the parties in the communication that means so you are the sender of the message so you can't uh, deny that uh, I, I have sent the message okay you can't say that i didn't send the message on the other hand if the receiver have received your message he can't deny that i have not received your message okay so this is how the first uh, thing comes here. Then origin non repudiation That means uh, the origin can't say that uh, I have not done it. A destination non repudiation That means the receiver or the destination can't say I didn't receive it. Okay. So this is what um, comes under this uh, security services of X eight double O. Then relationship among integrity data origin authentication and uh, rep uh, repudiation. If you see, it is integrity comes at the core. Okay, then first you need integrity, right? Then it comes for the authentication. Okay, that means you can authenticate the source. Uh, you can also authenticate uh, the person who is sending all these things. Okay, then comes non repudiation That means who have sent uh, the source and destination, both side should not be deny that uh, I have done it or uh, I have sent it, I, I received it, okay? Is that it? Hmm. Then uh, security mechanisms, uh, you can see here, uh, some of them are listed here. First one is uh, cryptographic techniques. It comes to uh, the you know, encryption and decryption methods where uh, I mainly work, okay? I work in uh, some other part of the security also, but uh, this is what uh, one of my topic I work. Okay, and then security and uh, hardware for uh, access uh, limitations. So, using a firewall, we can do it. Intrusion detection and prevention system. This is what uh, another place I work. Okay, detect and prevent the malicious packets. Then, traffic padding against traffic analysis. Then, another mechanism is uh, hardware for authentication. There can be hardware uh, like smart card and uh, Security tokens you may have in metro stations. Uh, there are you know security tokens they give basically. Okay, and smart cards are used for you know <coughs> for uh, authentication in offices and uh, in different entry points. You can have a smart card and you can show it and you can open the gate and all. You know it, right? <laughs> then um, next comes is uh, security policies and uh, or access control. Okay, they define who can access uh, to which resources. Then physical security, keep it in safe place and limited author authorized physical access. So I will give you uh, assignment in one or two days, the first assignment, okay, which will be on mainly based on access control because uh, not access, sorry, sorry, which will be mainly based on security policy. Basically, you know, in this part, this access control and security policies, there is only Two part. One part is policies. That is a written thing, right? <coughs> mm, say you are the director of organization, or you are the IT head of some organization. Now you have to develop a security policy for your organization. Okay. Or another way, say you are an employee of some organization. Then you have to read the security policy of the organization very well. 
so whenever we are going to join some company you no know, after a uh, one year itself <coughs> so you will find uh, when you will join some security policy will be given to you and some of the policy rules will be written on your appointment letter <coughs> itself as a condition that what you can do with the assets what you can't do okay mm, you will find that many of them will be written on your appointment letter like uh, you can copy the office data to in your personal pen drive you can use the official laptop for your personal use like social media and other thing you can install or uninstall software from your office desktop or laptop so all these things so you will find uh, they will be uh, straightforward right on your appointment letter itself and some other part will, you will find when you will join okay and when again <laughs> when you will be in a good position that time you have to frame out these rules okay and you, i think uh, after this discussion of last few classes you were a little bit uh, able to understand why these policies are right then physical security keep uh, it in the safe place uh, with limited authorized uh, physical access so that, that we understand right so the data server and hard disks all these things should be in the you know, physically safe place where anybody can uh, enter or make any change uh, so that is understood thing in your audio knows correct then uh, cryptographic uh, security mechanism there is uh, first thing i have already told you the uh, encryption the, what is the encryption i think uh, most of you already know that is you know in some mathematical algorithm to transform your data into a form that is not re, uh, no readily intelligible that means <laughs> if you don't have the correct key if you don't have uh, the correct algorithm you can't read out the data okay so that is what uh, happens in encryption then comes the message digest i think this is this is what uh, again uh, many of you know that is uh, you know the hash functions are used uh, to you know take the hash of the message which can be used later to check integrity of your message authentication of the message and yeah so one thing already you have used uh, something really looks like similar is uh, Error, connect, error correction code in uh, I think uh, in your computer networks or communication you have you may have seen right so that is somewhat uh, looks like message digest okay next comes um, the digital signature and message authentication so the, it is uh, no, uh, data appended to or a uh, you know cryptographic transformation of a data unit to prove the source and uh, the you know integrity of the data so again it comes uh, the source uh, authentication definitely and uh, integrity okay so that can be done again using you know message authentication and um, <coughs> digital signature so you will find that uh, message digest is more about you know more looks like error correction code you know by you know physical appearance or by technique okay but uh, digital signature is a little bit different you will find uh, message authentication uh, is again kind of most of most of uh, the part is about hashing okay you may have heard about shs algorithm sha1 sha2 sha256 right so all these things comes under that then authentication exchange so there are authentication exchanges which you know i have already told you about them right uh, so when you are using some server with a new device uh, for example so and, um, the server is uh, finding this uh, device for the first time how it will authenticate the device uh, you know, or whoever is accessing through that device so authentication exchanges helps uh, at that point or uh, okay and uh, almost every time you connect to the server uh, which is you know securely uh, configured or <coughs> tsl is configured or ssl is configured then uh, you know it is going to be uh, use some authentication exchange next uh, security mechanism you can see there is two thing uh, basic thing in the uh, mechanism one is notarization another is time stamping so these two terms are quite you know from the real world 
<laughs> the notarization you understand right so when we commit something when we promise something and or uh, when we declare something as uh, you know we are going to keep this promise we are going to keep this world or so we are uh, we have this this that that things then what do we do we go to notarization or uh, you know notary office and we declare it in front of the notarizers right so when you are doing the same thing online so every time you need to be you know assure give the assurance of non repetition that what message you are sending whatever you are doing you are the an accountable person for that thing whatever you are doing so that notarization should you know need to be done online right so that mechanism should be there and time stamping them at what time it happened the time stamp should be part of it okay that is also important so whenever i think you have already studied uh, dvms uh, like subjects so you will find that whatever database you are using uh, sorry you are creating whatever database you getting whichever it is you must have one column that is called time stamp okay at what time the data is entered in the table or uh, that you know row is created to the table that time stamp must be there and then you know, many times it happens that you will need multiple time stamp you know for a single thing like uh, you'll find uh, you know login so if you just uh, want to track that one person how many time one person is logging into the system then you have to keep a database itself or database table itself that uh, to save that time stamps okay then that is another part uh, just for uh, you know, recalling uh, what time stamp is or uh, where uh, last time i think you have seen that time stamp i just given that example but in our security mechanism the time stamp should take a you know important place and then this is the general concept of you know network security or how information flows over the network so i think yeah, this is also you understand um, so authentication server we was talking as uh, we was uh, talking about that you know, comes here the third party you know, trusted third party it can be this third party can be authentication server okay <coughs> and uh, sometimes yeah, another important thing authentication servers uh, and when you are connecting with the hotspot so you are connecting your mobile phone to your hotspot basically that uh, access point itself the hotspot itself have a software defined uh, you know authentication server itself uh, in it okay so that time you will not realize that an authentication server is work in the background but it have it okay so that is uh, nothing then you can see here the communication flow you have the message you have the secret information here then security related transformation whatever you want to do encryption decryption or whatever it is you does it then secure message you have then you transmit the secure message using the information channel then message came to the other part and uh, receiver part of the channel okay <laughs> then security related transformation that means if you have encrypted here you need to decrypt here then the message goes to the recipient's hand okay and here you can see the opponent auto opponent means here the attackers who are sitting here to capture the data from the channel and read it out okay or uh, if they can't read they can disturb you they can disturb the communication they can do you know many hindrances they can add some extra data and uh, the or malicious data to the packets which will you know which will come to the receiver with the authenticated data so data what is sent by the sender okay so what will happen the receiver will think that i am getting the data from the sender so this is a harmless data or not malicious data but that uh, attacker have added some malicious code hmm, to that hmm. so it can happen <coughs> so here is again the security mechanism x double and uh, what are the things uh, you know the you know service and mechanism service versus, versus mechanism so what are the services are uh, listed there and what mechanisms are used to assure or to provide those services so first one you can see peer entity authentication it is uh, 
it can be you know given by mechanism like encipherment, digital signature, authentication exchange, all these things. Then uh, next service is uh, data origin authentication. Again, encipherment can be used, or that digital signatures can be used. Then access control uh, for uh, access control mechanism is also access control. Okay. Then confidentiality, encipherment can be help you, and routing control can help you to maintain the confidentiality. Okay. Then traffic flow confidentiality again the encipherment uh, going to help you. Traffic padding can help you and traffic writing can help you. And then data integrity, data integrity can be again assured by encipherment, digital signature and, and some other data integrity mechanisms. Okay, so that is the reason you know, when we study this kind of subject, the encipherment part becomes very, very important because you know most of the services can be assured by encipherment. Okay, then uh, non repetition <laughs> that can be assured by the digital signature and uh, data integrity and notarization. Okay, and availability can be assured by data integrity and uh, authentication X and these two things. Uh, okay, so <laughs> these are the services and these are the mechanisms that are listed here. Okay, so you can see the source also given here. So models for information security you can see here first is uh, design a suitable algorithm for uh, secure uh, transformation. First thing you have to have an algorithm which will help you for secure transformation. Next thing is generate the secret information like keys used by the algorithm algorithms and third is develop method to distribute and share the secret information or the keys. Okay. That is another part, important part. Then specify a protocol enabling the principle to um, <coughs> use the transformation and secret information for the security service. Okay. So here you can see the what uh, what is given by NIST. Uh, you know, you, I think uh, you all know what is NIST. It is National Institute of Standards and Technology. Okay, previously it was called as NBS of uh, definitely it is in USA. Okay, so so NIST basically the body which uh, gives uh, you know standards or uh, you know specify the standards for most of the security and network oriented things. Okay, and this is a federal agency within US Commerce Department's Technology Administration. So NIST's mission is to develop and promote with uh, uh, the measurement standards and technology to enhance uh, productivity, facilitate trade, and improve the quality of life. So why it is important? The most important thing is that when you are purchasing devices from different vendors and you are using those devices in a single network, now how these devices will communicate to each other if there is no standard? Okay, so NIST mm, defines the standard, and that is the reason you have, uh, you know, mm, uh, you have, we guys, we people are able to communicate with the heterogeneous devices. Like you can see, like uh, you know, USB port. It doesn't matter which uh, laptop, computer, or which uh, device you are purchasing from which vendor. USB port is same for everyone. Reason is that that is a standard one. Well, somebody have given the specification the width should be this much this there should be <coughs> four connection only in it okay and uh, which uh, connect, which uh, connection will uh, define what so all these things are you know standardized okay then cryptographic standard and applications are also given by this NIST uh, like uh, most uh, popular one is AES algorithm I will find okay then federal federal information processing standard uh, defined by the security standard so you know all these things uh, you know what nist does for us uh, are, you know, mainly they does for us and uh, you can understand that's the um, most of the other countries and uh, uh, <coughs> no, uh, industry follows their standard okay it is open thing so there are some fundamental fundamental trade off like you know, between security and ease of use. You can understand, right? So if your security is too strict and very 
hard to use. Uh, password is too, too long. Nobody is going to use it. Okay. The security may require you know, clumsy and an you know, convenient uh, restriction on user purpose. So this is one part, uh, and you know this is uh, said by Martin Hellman, who is the co-investor of public key cryptography. And everything should be as secure as necessary, but not secure. That means you understand how much security is required for a particular thing. It is better to provide that much so that it will be convenient to use. If you give too much of security to impose, then the convenience will be loosen and people will obviously, you know, take away from that particular product or particular system, you know, and they, <laughs> so that is the thing. So, okay, so I'm not going forward today because uh, I have some other work today. So, I'm ending this class here. If you have any query or anything you want to ask, you can ask me. Do you have anything to ask? 